Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be talking over something that I've been planning for a good couple of weeks now, but I never got around to really filming the video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about AMD's W5700 graphics card. Again, it's a workstation graphics card, and from what I gather, it's basically built on the same architecture as the gaming series 5700 card. So. It should, it'll be interesting, we should be able to get a very similar performance in terms of hash rate on Ethereum. And I can't wait to get into this. I bought this at a time when, like obviously we know the GPU availability in a minute is really bad, but back then it was bad as well, so I was looking for alternatives of what I can buy. And uh, in the UK I stumbled upon this card. And I thought, why not? Let's try and let's try and get it working. If you find this video useful, please smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Uh, we're coming with lots lots of more content just like this and uh, thanks so much let's crack on with the video okay so in this video what I'm going to do is we're going to split in a couple sections and basically I'm going to show the non voting modded performance of the card just uh, in Windows then I'm going to show you the modded performance of the card and then we're going to talk a bit around the profitability and then after that I'm going to then also tell you uh, a wee bit of a story about this card and I'll, I'll, I'll leak it here before we get into it but basically I bricked the card so <laughs> which hurt me de deeply so we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll go into that and you'll find all about it if you, if you watch the whole video let's get straight into it we're going to go into the non-modded performance first what performance you get right out of the box on Ethereum let's go come on unfortunately when I was putting this video together I realized I didn't actually record this part of the video or what would have been here so it's very unfortunate but like I said I bricked the card so I can't actually go back and show you so you're just gonna have to take my word for it <laughs> but on a Windows based system using NB minor I was able to achieve straight out of the box not doing anything to the card I was able to achieve 50 mega hash at 150 watts and we know from if you go and look up drunk miner on YouTube he was able to achieve on Hive OS 50 mega hash at 105 watts I don't know if he modded the card at all I'm not too sure I don't think he says in his video but you could always go and ask him if that was just straight out of the box into into a rig and that's what he achieved on Hive OS so you can go and ask him that if, if you want a clarification but this is what we know has been achieved now I'm gonna go on to show you what I was able to achieve while modding the card so let's go into that after modding the w5700 you can see here over on mb minor version 39.2 it picks up the w5700 and it's getting us 52.3 mega hash or there and there about it fluctuates a little bit but it's basically between 52 and 53 mega hash um, and you can see here it doesn't show the power or any of the temps or the fan settings so using GPU-Z, as you can see here, you can see that the GPU temperature is 47 degrees. We've got memory temperature of 70 degrees. It's running at a fan speed of fluctuating a wee bit, but around about 50, 58 to 60% fan speed. You can see the RPM there. And critically, you can see the GPU chip power draw here, which is 95 watts. So you can see that that's basically 92, 93 mega hash for around about 95 watts, 94 watts, which is really quite good. And you can see also that it's confirmed here with the AMD software. So you can see the power draw. And you can see, unfortunately, they don't have memory temperature on here, but you can see like it's a very similar. Uh, GPU temperature and you can see the the you can see the clock speeds here as well obviously core clock here so yeah that is the performance with the modded BIOS for the W5700 and I think it's really quite good it looks uh, to be nice and efficient uh, with fairly good mega hash to, to wattage 
uh, which is fantastic. So if we were to compare that against uh, a A4000, let's just wait for the software here. So if you were to compare that against the A4000 in the same environment, these two cards are just mining beside each other. You can see like the A4000, obviously I've underclocked this A4000 a little, but it's doing this mega hash at 110 watts. And obviously like your, your memory temperature here is, you know, a good eight degrees higher, but it's also running at 95% fan to keep that temperature. So you can see that the cooler on the W5700 is much more substantial. So that's quite nice. It's a good thing to know. So if you're in a maybe a country where it's, you know, very very warm, um, for instance, like I know, I know, obviously some people are in India and other parts of the world where it's much much hotter uh, than it is where I'm at. You can see that I think this card would do a fairly good job for you in terms of um, temperature because it's got that substantial cooler on it. So. That's, that's just an interesting thing to take note of. Okay, so what I've done here is I've put some of the values into a notepad and we have efficiency, we have price per mega hash, this is in dollars, and you can see I've done the modded BIOS W5700 against, uh, we're doing a comparison against the A2000, which some people are calling the efficiency king. So, so um, yeah, we're doing a comparison there. And you can see here for the modded 5700, W5700, uh, is 52 mega hash divided by 95 watts. And that's getting you 0.55. And then if we compare the A2000 with the values that I'm mining at at the minute, which is 40 mega hash divided by 66 watts, you get 0 0.61. So in terms of mega hash to watt, like the efficiency on the W5700 is actually really quite good. Yes, like the A2000 has a better efficiency, yes, but it is a, it is a super efficient GPU in today's uh, market. So, like, the W5700 is comparing very, very well, very favorably here. And you can see in the price per mega hash, I have put the, the values I paid for, the W5700, and you should know here, what I've done is, I've bought this directly from HP. It's an HP W5700. You should know it. That is something you have to know. I haven't mentioned that yet, but that's something you have to know. HP, I bought it direct. And in the UK, you get something called Quidco. And when you buy from HP, you get 8% um, cash back. So I've uh, taken that 8% into consideration here and this is the value I paid for it after I get the cash back. So you can see what I'm getting here. I'm getting $18.7 per mega hash. And when you compare the A2000, this is the value I paid for the A2000 here. And that is getting you $15.7 per mega hash. So again, they, they compare pretty good. They compare pretty well. They're pretty close. And I know around the world, obviously, you can get different prices. Uh, in certain parts of the world, you'll, you'll be able to find these cards for different prices. So if you could get the W5700 for uh, less than what I got it for, then you're, you're getting very close to the A2000 for sure. We're going to move on to the wee story and what happened next with the card. So let's get straight into that. Okay, so like, basically what happened was I decided what I'd go and do is I'd go and create my own ROM file for flashing onto the card. Like a bit of a silly, silly boy, I decided I'd go and do my own one. The, the flash got interrupted, the, the operation got interrupted, or my file that I created was incorrect. And after it was flashed and I tried to power up, Basically, the card never got detected again. So, uh, this was obviously quite a worry for me. And 
I looked, did some more research online and I realised there was a couple different avenues you could go down to, to try and unbrick your card. There's a video on YouTube which is unbricking with shorting the BIOS chip in order to get the card to detect uh, in, the, in the operating system. Unfortunately, I avoided the warning when I did it, but I, I, took, I, took, I took the gamble, you know. I, I, I thought it would be fun to do it anyway, because I've not really, I've not done too much of that in the past eh, of taking cards apart and stuff. So I thought it'd be a bit of fun, let's take it apart and eh, try and reflash the card. It should, should hopefully work, because there was a lot of chat online of people doing it and it did work for them. So I thought, you know what, I'll try it myself as well. So I gave an attempt, I took it apart, as you can see and it didn't it didn't work for me um, so yeah I just want to cry man I just want to cry <laughs> after multiple times of trying the two pin method short and the, the BIOS flash device I eventually gave up because I, I wouldn't stick and it wouldn't successfully flash the old ROM so I decided to go and buy a EEPROM a programmer and I did I went and purchased one of them off Amazon it wasn't too expensive I can't remember I think it was like 40 quid 50 to 60 dollars basically not too expensive bought that attempted to do that and to some degree it worked it allowed you to flash the card and it came back it said it was successful it read it all back it said it was fine but then when I tried to put it back on the motherboard and power it up it just wouldn't detect the card, even though the flash was programmed successfully. A little bit of a long story, but basically I think I may have bricked this card and I'm not too sure what's wrong with it because I have tried multiple things to try and get it to work. Uh, I did spend quite a while actually attempting to fix this card and I just couldn't get it fixed. Just my knowledge is not good enough. Maybe I damaged the card, I'm not too sure uh, in some way, but I've tried the various different methods of flashing it and I just couldn't get it to work. So if anybody has any experience of flashing 5700s or 5700 XTs or even the W5700, if you could let me know in the comment section below what possibly I could try. If anyone's from Igor's lab as well, please, please get in touch. I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do going ahead with this card. I was thinking about either getting somebody a bit more professional who's uh, who knows how to deal with certain issues with graphics cards, maybe they had some experience with AMD. Or what I might do is I might just sell the card as broken or for spares, I'm, I'm not too sure. So the cooler on it did such a fantastic job of cooling the card, it was, did a great job the memory was nice and cool so that i think that's a huge positive and also i got to say is this uh, how quiet is the noise and on this cooler is super quiet and it keeps it super cool so i was really impressed with this card and it's only unfortunate that i basically bricked the card otherwise i'd be highly recommending this if the flashing does go wrong you know, it's just a nightmare. Well, that's all from today's video. I really hope that you guys found this useful. And uh, if you did, please smash that like button. Really, really helps the channel out. Uh, please again, subscribe if you haven't already. Much more content coming very, very soon. And I just want to say, hope everybody has a fantastic day. And I'm going to be coming very soon with more content. So we're going to see you in the next one.